I quit overconsuming when I created a challenge for myself that totally transformed my buying habits. Before, I always thought that I was bad with money, and I don't want to take ownership of that title anymore. I am responsible for how I steward my finances. This is not something that I understood early on in my marriage. I felt like I needed to have the perfectly styled home. I obsessed over home details. I thrifted constantly for the deal. I had a throw pillow obsession and I struggled with online shopping. I was so stuck in this cycle of feeling like I needed to add to our life. If you find yourself in this same situation where you are constantly on the hunt for the deal, the score, constantly searching for sales and clearance racks, feeling like you need to buy X, Y, and Z item, because it will be perfect in XYZ place. It's not uncommon. And I was once in your shoes. I've clearly been there. And I was so stuck in overconsuming. Now, to overconsume is the action or fact of consuming in excess. You can think of this as an overconsumption of calories, or in my case, it was material goods. It's really about not having a deep understanding of why you're purchasing something. It's so easy to have your credit card hooked up to your computer, to your phone, where you don't even have to type it in. You can just buy in one click. There's such a lack of intentionality behind our buying and purchasing decisions. This was totally the case for me when I was newly postpartum and feeling like I needed to buy a whole new wardrobe to make me feel better. Things that I bought or things that I thought I needed to be buying weren't actually adding to my life. It's a human condition to want the things that we cannot have. And for me, I got on this hamster wheel of buying, buying, buying. It got to the point where my thrifting habit needed to stop if we were going to ever buy a house or make any financial gains. As women, we are naturally able to multiply. If you give us groceries, we'll make you a meal. If you give us a house, we will make it a home. It's such a such a beautiful thing. I kept yearning for more. I fell into this comparison trap of seeing how other people live their lives that I couldn't see how I wanted to live my own life. It was all subconscious. It was so hard for me to stop consuming. It was hard for me to get my finances in order. I feel like I need to continually fight this battle of overconsumption in this modern world. It's become so, so easy to buy with that one click. And marketers, they are so smart. They know this. They want us to buy in just that one click. They have taken the whole thought process out of our buying decision. So what did I do to change? Well, it all started when my husband challenged me to only spend $1,000 a month. Now, to give you some context, I typically bought consumables for our family, so I was in charge of clothing, food, and our electric bill. I had such a hard time with this. Because for whatever reason, I couldn't get this budget to work for me. Until after a really hard conversation between the two of us, it hit me like a ton of bricks that I needed to manage my finances better. I couldn't just be buying whatever I wanted if I wanted it. I needed to be an active participant in long-term finance goals. I didn't understand that our long-term financial goals would be achieved in our everyday moments and our everyday buying decisions. After that conversation, I apologized to my husband because I wasn't stewarding our finances very well for really not understanding our long-term financial goals. I am not the best forward thinker. I am not even a past thinker. I'm more like, like, I'm just one of those people that focuses on the now more than anything. I really don't plan too far in advance and I don't linger on the past. I'm really one of those people that just lives right in the moment. So future planning is not something I'm very good at. So at the end of 2022, after we had this conversation, I needed to challenge myself. His challenge was not going to work for me. Just giving me a broad number, I just, I knew that I needed to challenge myself in a different way. So this is where I decided I needed to change something. So I created this challenge for myself. I call it make first, thrift second, and buy third. And it's really just as it sounds. If I'm able to make something, I will make it. If it's in my capabilities, I will go ahead and make it. Then I would go to the thrift store and check multiple times if I am looking for a certain item. For me, I really went to the thrift store to look for kids clothing, clothing for me if I needed it, and any books and you know kids stuff like that and if I couldn't find it there then I would go ahead and buy from a place that aligned with my values so this challenge it changed two key things in my buying decisions first it slowed down my buying process second it gave me 
a framework to put all of my buying decisions through, which I really didn't have before. Before, if I wanted something or I felt like I needed something, I would just buy it. I wouldn't even think about it other than in that exact moment. So being able to really stop and consider and truly process why I feel like I needed X, Y, and Z item helped me so, so much. It made me realize how many times I wanted to buy something based on some something that an influencer recommended. I realized I was shopping to keep up with the virtual Joneses and really not aligning my finances with the way that I wanted to live my life. And this challenge, it saved us so much money. I was able to dive into different hobbies that I already had the materials for. I really, really got into sewing that year. I even made a few pieces of clothing for me. Because I wasn't spending my time looking and searching for deals, I actually had time to, for hobbies. I created this YouTube channel in 2023 because I had so much extra time. I was able to slow down and dive into an exploration of hobbies, which is, it's been so beneficial for me. It's healed this notion that I need more to be happy when really it made me realize that I already have everything that I needed. But don't get me wrong, it's hard to not compare yourself to other people. What really needs to happen is for you to zoom out and view it from the much bigger picture. If you're working on saving for a home or home renovations, going to the thrift store every weekend is not going to get you there. I finally learned those hard financial lessons that I've needed to learn for a very long time. So now I look forward to this year, now found that I need to subtract from our life rather than add to it. And the way that I'm doing that is through my decluttering journey. If you look at this channel at all, you will see that I am a big fan of decluttering and I'm actively decluttering my home right now. I don't think I would have gotten to this point if I hadn't challenged myself to make first, thrift second, and buy a brand new third. I am working to declutter 85% of the things that we own because we will be moving into a camper this summer, well, really in the next few weeks. So making sure that our home is super minimal and we don't have to storm anything will be huge. And we'll be working on a massive home renovation. You can find both of those playlists linked below. So. What can you do? Well, if you have a sewing machine, I would challenge you to start making your own clothes. I would really challenge you to have a make first rule, especially when it comes to clothing for you and your kids. Now, if you aren't that into sewing or you don't even have a sewing machine, I would encourage you to find a way to slow down your buying process. Bring some consciousness back into your purchasing decisions. So initially, you can just stop buying with that one click If that means taking your credit card out of any places that it's saved, go ahead and do that. I did that for a very long time. So you need to create a natural stopping point. So maybe it's when you add something to your cart and you leave it there for 24 hours. If you are still thinking about the item or your cart 24 hours from now, then you can revisit and think about why you were trying to buy the item in the first place. I still do this. You need to be careful because you can rationalize any decision to meet your desires. Then you can ask yourself, will this item serve me and my family for years to come? Or will I be decluttering it probably a year from now? If you have an online shopping issue like I did, try spending less time on your phone and really get better phone boundaries. Take your credit card off of your phone. Take it out of any places that you have saved it. This will help you by giving you that extra step of needing to type in your credit card because we know how annoying that is. And lastly, I want you to embrace a less is more attitude. I was recently listening to a podcast where the women were talking about how they were decluttering kids toys and they said something to me that was so profound they said that if your children are less than 18 months or younger all they're doing is they're just trying to explore their environment they're so happy with a spatula or anything that isn't a toy and i can attest to this i've seen it in both of my kids so most kids at these ages are more content with a spatula than any other toy. So your kids don't need the latest and greatest when it comes to toys, especially if they're little. All they need is a place, a safe place to explore their environment. So if you find yourself over consuming and on the hamster wheel of buying, you have the power to change all of that. I feel like the first step in combating over consumption is to bring awareness to it. To bring awareness to the purchases you're making or the reasons behind why you are buying something. Then you can create an action plan on how to adjust from there and adjust it to your buying habits and your buying needs. 
If you are all new here, I'm Caitlin. I love creating with intention as I share about creating a home, decluttering your life, and savoring your days. I've always been someone who craves a creative outlet. This is one of my favorite ways to connect with you and share about my life as a wife, mom, and creative. If you like this video, you want to watch this video next where I talk all about savoring your life and savoring your days. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you there.